three, episode three of Blue Church Hacks. And uh, this is our webinar series. I am your sibling, Pastor Terrell L. McTire, and I serve as your minister of New Church Strategies in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ New Church Ministry. We are recording this, the playback, and each of our guests' hacks will be available at newchurchhacks.com, so you want to step out there a little bit later. There you will find every episode of this digital series where we provide practical and sometimes peculiar prompts for the church from start to restart. Today, we will discover a dozen hacks for digital discipleship and disciple making. And the purpose of this webinar is to help you consider new ways to use the internet, apps, devices, technologies to fulfill the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, it says at verse 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, including today. So we thank you, God, for being with us today. I doubt that when Apostle Matt had imagined the advent of the worldwide, I mean, uh, that doing this great commission that he knew that there would be a worldwide web where we would be able to actually cha be challenged to uh, be followers of Christ and go out to the ends of the ages without even leaving our armchairs. But here we are. And so stay to the very end where I'm going to also give you seven totally off topic, but invaluable new church hacks. Now, this is engaging. This is all of us who are in the room are the SMEs for the day. So you have an opportunity to uh, provide what you think as tips or resources. Just throw them into the chat so that we can all learn together. And we'd love to also know who is at the table. So as you see already, there's people who say, this is where I'm from. I so happen today to be visiting you from Atlanta, Georgia, where I am here with our Georgia region. Later, we'll be able to ask all of our topic leaders questions, but if you have a question or something that you're wanting to get an answer to as we go along, drop that question in the Q&A feature on the side of the platform. If we don't get your question, we're going to hang out a little bit later and we can do some chatting about what's on your mind. Okay, let's get into it. First, let's begin by uh, introducing today's conversationalist. Right here in the room with me is the one and only P.Y. Um, Lamani. Langani. I strike this and practice and practice, and then I still yeah. mess it up every time I'm horrible with it. So, just to be fair, I'm going to mess up the other Lawrence names fair. too. Fair. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, P.Y. is the ambassador for innovation and engagement with the Center for Analytics, Research, and Development and Data, which is short for card, which is long for cards, in the United Church of Christ. That is quite the business card, sir. <laughs> oh, uh, and then we have Lauren DJ Braxton. His name is really Baxter, but you know I gotta mess it up. So yeah, Lauren Baxter, who is the director of technology resources at Bright Divinity School, and then also Lauren uh, Richardson, actually Lauren Richmond, <laughs> who is the pastor and a podcaster and a social entrepreneur. I've had the opportunity to be a guest on his podcast. Uh, go out and check out my episode, and there's some others there too. Um, so we want you to enjoy all of our conversationalists today. You're going to have a great time this afternoon, we ensure you. All right, you have an opportunity to inquire of each of these great humans towards the end. And if you have any pressing questions regarding disciple making, again, drop them into the Q&A now and let's get into it. Let me start by first asking each of you a question. So let's drop that poll. And here's the question. We want to understand what you are thinking about when it comes to disciple making. Who's responsible for making disciples? Is it the pastor? Is it the congregation? The spirit? Is it you? <laughs> is it Terrell? Or is it anybody but you? Who do you think is responsible for uh, making disciples? So we got the, the, the polls coming in. I'm going to go ahead and let Piwa do the thing. Excellent, excellent. I'm excited to be here and thrilled. And uh, we're just gonna hop right in with some like don'ts and do pairs. Um, the first of which I'm gonna hang the, this right in front of the camera, yeah? Yeah, sure. All right, so the first one is uh, don't compare yourself to other ministries. Hope y'all can see that okay. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, um, how many of us, many folk uh, love looking at the churches down the street or the, or the mega church down the way um, to see how does it that they're doing their ministries and then we just lament that we're not like them and so we end up 
spending our time and energy trying to be them when it's not us, right? So instead, I encourage you to do what you are good at. Um, if you are good at uh, organ music, make sure you're the best at it, right? You know, so maybe the church on the street is great at uh, guitars and screens and whatnot. And instead of trying to be like them, right? You can do what you do and do it very well. Um, our next don't tip is uh, don't use insider language. Now, I don't know about y'all, but in the United Church of Christ and the UCC, uh, we love our acronyms and we mm -hmm. often acronym all throughout our sentences. You know, you saw my title and my, you know, the, the team that I work on. And so it's a mouthful. So it's very easy just to say acronyms and whatnot. And so um, just be cautious about using insider language because not everybody who you'll be engaging will even understand what you're talking about, you know. Um, so instead, I encourage you to do periodic digital audits. By that, I mean, check out your website. If you uh, look at your website um, and pretend that you are a guest or someone you're trying to bring into your space, um, will they get tripped up on any language that you're using? You know, will they understand what you're talking about when you use, you know, maybe denominational language or, um, uh, you know, your, your community might have some shortcuts and stuff the way that y'all talk about things, you know? So um, being mindful of the language you're using to make sure that people who are not you or those already in your inside circle can engage and be a part of your, the disciple making that you're doing. And so uh, relatedly, don't assume your knowledge is common. Don't assume your knowledge is common. And so by this, I mean, you know, um, uh, there's so many congregations I've served in the past who have talked about, you know, when we invite them to like do some evangelism, right, and sharing the word beyond their, beyond their walls, they're like, oh, everybody knows we're nice. Everybody knows we're this. But how do people know outside of the circle that you're nice? that you're open and affirming of LGBTQ folk, right? So really, truly, you know, we assume when you're meeting with people that you enjoy, that you're around often, that what you know is what others know, but um, that's actually not true, right? So instead, I encourage you to evangelize. Now, I know that's a word that we don't use often, especially in like liberal circles and liberal communities and whatnot, um, but truly at the core of evangelizing, it really is about sharing the good news, right? Who doesn't want to hear some good news? If you buy some bounty paper towels that handle your biggest messes, guess what? You telling people about those bounty paper towels, right? That's some good news for people who are prone you to mistakes. You about to start costing me money. So. Look, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, no. I mean, you going to bleep that out? <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. Paper towels. Um, so truly, right? So if what y'all are doing is great and good, make sure you're sharing that as well, right? So using that evangelize or as y'all might say, disciple making, make sure that you're getting out there, letting people know who you are and, you know, what you're trying to be about. Um, and as you're doing so, the next don't is don't expect specific results. This might be a pet peeve of mine where folk will um, vote to be open and affirming, right, to make stances and statements, you know, that are like really great welcoming statements for LGBTQ folk or, you know, anti-oppression messages. Um, and then they do so because they're expecting young families to show up to church or that the, the, the payoff will be more butts and pews. But that's really not the purpose of what we're doing, right? The purpose of why we are making disciples, right, is to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God, right? We're doing these things because it's the right thing to do, not because we're gonna get more people into our doors, not because you know we're gonna get more likes and follows and more shares, or we're gonna go viral, right? And so uh, the next thing I wanna encourage y'all is uh, don't be an expert at everything. Now, we have been steeped in white supremacy for my entire life and most of our lives that are, or all of our lives that are here uh, listening to this voice and watching this webinar, right? Where, um, this idea of perfection, this idea of owning knowledge, this idea of like having everything perfectly packaged um, is a symptom of white supremacy, you know? So instead, I really absolutely encourage y'all to uh, do stretch your learning. And part of stretching your learning is to admit that you don't know everything. Part of stretching your learning means making mistakes, right? Admitting where we didn't quite get things the right way, right? You know, being able to acknowledge any harms that we maybe didn't intend to do, but impacted people in a harmful way. That means being able to cycle back, acknowledge our harms, and then to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with God, right? To be able to then, you know, do what we can to participate in the bringing around the justice. And so uh, the last pair 
I have for you is don't bend your theology for technology. Now I can do a whole series on this, but in the time that I have, I'll just kind of like shortcut that by saying, um, make sure that whatever you're doing has your values at the core. If you value community and connectivity, then make sure what you're doing online, right? Lines up with being able to connect folk you know, even if that means we have to do that from a social, a, a physical distance, right? Being able to connect, not just grab likes, right? If your values aren't about being popular, then it doesn't matter how many likes you have, right? But instead, if your values and your theology is about healing, make sure what you're doing on digital spaces is about healing, right? So, so this one's a little bit deeper that, you know, hopefully you'll chew on that a little bit more, right? And so uh, the final pairing of that is do be authentic. This is another pet peeve. I don't know how many pet peeves are in this, but uh, the whole bait and switch, you know, if I look at your website and you are saying all the right things, you have all the perfect language constructed so well, and I show up and at the door, I met with oppression because I'm black or queer or whatever else, right? Because I'm young looking or, you know, because I wear purple shoes, whatever. But like, make sure that who you are is actually evidenced in your digital spaces. Don't do the digital stuff because it's like the newest, coolest, greatest thing. Right. And then people show up and it's not actually who you are, right? So definitely strive for being, you know, authentic um, more than perfect, right? You know, strive for being uh, uh, rooted in your, your theology um, and not just what the coolest and latest and greatest things are technologically. That's all I got for now. <laughs> that was good. That was good. So let's uh, let me list them for you if, in case you got it because there was a lot to impact. And again, we're going to put all these on our website, but PY's hacks was do not compare yourself to other ministries, but you should do what is good, what you are good at. Don't use insider language, but periodically do digital audits. Don't assume you know everything instead do, um, and that all knowledge is in common. Uh, you want to instead do some real evangelism don't expect specific results, but do what is true to the gospel. Have justice, love, mercy, walk humbly with God. Don't be an expert at everything, but stretch your learning. Be open to learning new things. And lastly, bend your theology. Don't bend your theology for technology. Instead, be authentic to who you are. And I think those are all great hacks. Like everybody's audience is not on Facebook. Everybody's audience is not on Twitter. You know, you have to really know where your people are and do what is uh, uh, real authentic for you. So thank you so much. Those are great. All right, Lauren, we want to hear what you got for us. Were we going to do a poll in there, Terrell? Yeah, absolutely. Wesley's going to launch that now. All right. So yeah, we have a poll now that's coming in is asking you about your actual relationship with technology. So what is your relationship with technology? Do you use it every day, all day? Um, is it just sometimes a week, maybe only once a week? Or if this is your first time ever using technology on this website, welcome. <laughs> we hope that it's a transformative experience for you. Uh, but, but what do you think about the results here, Lauren? Can't wait to see the results. Okay, they're coming in and the majority of us, um, the, the vast, only 71% right now are saying they use technology all day, every day. There's only one person that uses it once a week. So we all are pretty relational with technology. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm, um, <clears throat> my first one is, and, and I'm going from kind of the, the attitude of if you're leading in meetings at church or guiding through conversations in your community. Um, so that's kind of the, my lens for my hacks that I'm sharing today. So um, is it okay for me to go ahead? Yeah, all right. So we've never done it that way before. Well, believe it or not, this is not the first time in our history that uh, culture has been changed by technology. Right? We've gone from printing presses to cable TV to electronic media. Uh, culture has moved again to this personalized, personalized social media. And we need to figure out how to communicate again and then figure out how to communicate again and then again and then again as all that social media stuff changes. So in order to do that, we need to have a spirit of curiosity that seeks to explore how these platforms work and who they're designed for and what message we want to share in that community and to that person. 
my second don't don't uh, negative or I don't, it's not really a negative is don't think I'll just take care of this by myself. Uh, engaging with the emergent and emerging digital culture can sure be a challenge. Um, there's just way too many layers for any one person to be able to master a piece of software or hardware or social media platform, right? Um, consider the local church that they might have been recording audio and distributing it on CD to their uh, or via post or a podcast to their homebound congregation. Well, what are they doing now? Are they live streaming? Who became the subject matter expert on streaming platforms? on cameras, microphones, lighting, network wiring. Everyone can share in cultivating relationships. So there are so many creative ways that we can work together. My last second one, the third one. We don't want them because, well, what's your story? The narrative of your life is certainly unique and so is mine. Culturally, we tend to gravitate toward people who look like us and think like us and worship like us. Uh, breaking away from the status quo means we have to be intentional about including people who look different and think differently and express themselves in ways that we may not understand initially. Uh, this points back to the importance of curiosity to help us learn about others and appreciate their uniqueness. The fourth one, that never works for me. I tried that before and it didn't work for me. We've all been in that meeting where ideas were squashed and brainstorming halted. We know how it feels when the energy in a room simply collapses. In turn, what would happen if we encourage people to learn and explore a topic or idea with greater depth? What if the information gathered and shared was supported by research or data or conversations with experts? We could establish well-designed communication solutions that solve problems and cultivate relationships with affirmation, love, and grace that blesses God and gives integrity to the message we have to share. Oh, I guess that was my third one. My fourth one is, edu oh yeah, yeah, that is my fourth one. And that's about encouraging education. So sorry for the hiccup there. No problem, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Listen, let's uh, give a little recap for a minute. Don't think, We've never done it that way before. Instead, have a spirit of curiosity. Uh, don't think, I'll just do that myself. I know that sometimes this is very true of us who plant churches. We just are kind of like doing it all ourselves, but instead have an attitude of collaboration. And then his third hack was, don't, um, don't think, we don't want them because, and fill in the blank there, instead be inclusive and really consider uh, the opportunities for diversity. And the last one was, don't think uh, that would never work for me. Instead, encourage education. We all have something to learn and you don't want to ever get complacent in where you're thinking and, um, and say, I know it all. So I think both of you kind of came from that area. Well, it's like, you don't want to say I know it all, but then you do really want to be aware of what you do know. And like PY said, be good at that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, I don't think you guys are related, right? Just because your names are the first. Yeah, okay. So the other Lauren is in the room as well. So Lauren Richmond, please help us with your hacks, please. Well, it's great to be in with another Lauren. So Lauren, I've not uh, been in a relationship with another Lauren like this since Bible college. So great to connect and thanks. Uh, great to be here with you all. Uh, I'm in currently in a, in a hospital doing one of my side hustles as a chaplain, hospital chaplain. So I'll just say a quick word. Uh, wear your masks, get your vaccines, love your neighbor, uh, if I can be so bold. Uh, I have a few tips that I really think connect well with what Piwa and, and my namesake Lauren have already said. Uh, first is don't be too broad, know your niche. So it really connects with what Piwa said about doing what you're good at, knowing what you're good at. Uh, I think some uh, we can want to do all things and be all things at all people. And I think uh, Terrell and New Church Ministry is a great example of how to do this well. So they, they do their church hacks, uh, webinars and episodes. And again, thinking about if you want to do like a digital discipleship or digital Bible study, like think about how you could do uh, a Bible study, for instance, on a book of the Bible or a topic. Like uh, I think New Church Ministry has coming up 
decolonializing the church. That's a great example of you could say we're going to offer a five week study or a 10 week study. Do it something that's time bound and limited so people don't feel like you're they're signing up for this indefinite period of time. But a great example, you could offer a five week study or, or a 10 week study, probably shorter, but on a singular topic and then move on to another topic. So don't be too broad and know your niche. Another one is don't be unclear. Uh, do provide clear calls of action. I know a lot of churches these days have done Zoom worship like we're doing now, which there's uh, pluses and minuses to all this technology and doing worship on it. I think for new people, getting on a platform such as this and showing your face can be intimidating. So provide clear opportunities for people to get involved uh, clear steps of action they can they can take so they can be involved. Uh, another one is, again, don't assume that people know what the next steps are to take. So again, they may join you on Zoom for a Sunday morning worship, or they may watch your YouTube, YouTube service. Don't assume that they know what they need to do next. Have a clear path, so to speak, they can follow. So you might say, uh, you know, Join us for a, a Zoom gathering afterwards. Send us an email, send us a text, some kind of clear uh, foot, footprints, some clear directions they can follow to help deepen their relationship and connections with you. Because again, uh, most people who are new, we don't really know what's going on, but we, if, we're, if we're engaging, we're interested in learning more, help us learn how to connect deeper. So. Conversely, you as the church, you as the pastor, you as a leader can help uh, grow them and help them on their discipleship journey. Um, and then one thing more practical I would say is don't be afraid to use the same content just on different platforms. Let's be honest, like we've all got limitations in our time. Like, you know, I'm doing this hospital chaplaincy side hustle. Uh, the reality is I'm not going to have time and many of you aren't going to have time to produce all this different kind of content for the different social media channels. That being said, be cognizant of the different platforms and what kind of content will do well. So TikTok and those kind of platforms probably want a 15, 20 second clip. You know, for Instagram, you can do like a minute clip. Facebook, people will engage a little bit longer. They can have up to three minute to 10 minute clips, for instance. So you can use the same content. So you don't need to be producing all kinds of different content. You can edit and clip down your single content for use on these different platforms. You just need to be cognizant of how to make these, this same content work and be contextually appropriate. Uh, so those are just some things that I think to consider about and be there's all kinds of different ways you can have uh, clear calls to action. Again, you might encourage people to direct message you to join your chat to join a zoom group. There's a lot of things you can do um, to help people get engaged and come uh, to a deeper connection with you, your church or with your with your group. All right. Thank you so much, Lauren. Those were all great. Uh, just to kind of recap. Don't be too broad. Instead, be aware of your niche. Uh, don't be unclear. Provide a clear call to action with your messaging. Don't assume that people know what is coming next. Instead, in a discipleship pathway, you want to be very clear about all the steps that are present, even in digital platforms. And lastly, don't be afraid to use the same content on multiple platforms. Tweet the content a little bit to uh, fit each one of them. You can take one sermon that's 20 minutes and literally like come up with 20 tweets. You can come up with, you know, several different um, Instagram posts. You can put it in the reel. You can put it on the actual page. Or you can do little small 50 second stuff. You can make it even smaller and put it for 50 seconds in a story. Like there are lots and lots of opportunity to take all of your old content, including old content that you use from last year or, you know, something very impromptu. I think that one of the great things about digital discipleship today differently than when the um, all of this kind of came out before like 20, 30 years ago is like there is a permission now to be 
I don't say less professional, but there's not all of this uh, pressure to have like this huge, huge budget that's got all these lights and this amazing camera. People are doing fantastic things just with their phones. So uh, maybe one of you can kind of address that. Like wh where, where do you sit on the level of investment that a church or a collective or a ministry needs to actually do in order to really live into this well? I would just say like, don't, you don't need to have top of the line. Uh, and I think it's unwise because with each level of complexity, the, the amount of time and complexity multiplies. So you might think, oh, I'm just going to add one little thing here. That kind of, they, they tend to multiply on top of one, one another. So uh, we have a great, great camera and microphone system. Most of us in our pockets, it's a great way to start in the, I always like to say the basic most important thing we can do is lighting. So even here in, in this chaplain room I'm in, uh, I have a, a little loom cube. Uh, you probably can't see it to help uh, illuminate myself so I look better or at least a little better. Can't can only do so much for this mug. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautifully and wonderfully made, Lauren. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, certainly. And I would hop into that too as well. Just this idea that you know, just a quick search online, you know, um, it doesn't have to be like the, the fanciest equipment that you need. There's, um, it's escaping me now, there's actually a term of folk who acquire new equipment and keep acquiring new equipment, but then never actually put it to work, right? So you can literally mm -hmm. get trapped in this, in this mode of like getting the next thing, next thing, next thing, thinking that you can't do stuff today until you have, you know, enough money or the budgets or the equipment that you need. But um, doing a quick Google search, right, to find out, you know, where where does it make sense to put my light? And I would add, in addition to lighting, is um, sound. You know, your video really is only as good as your audio as well. So make sure that, you know, that you're in a place that isn't too noisy. Um, you can literally put up, like, blankets or if you're in a carpeted room, right, just make sure sound is not bouncing around too much. But, um, you know, test, test, and test again. You know, call a friend, call a cousin, whatever, to see, um, you know, how that things are working, just to make sure, again, that, you know, your your video, your, your lighting is, is done well decently and that, you know, your audio is coming through well as too. Lauren, did you go ahead? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, you don't need a $5,000 video camera. Um, we found a 250 to $300 video camera that could stream in 1080p. And that's all people are expecting these days. Uh, anything, you know, 4k is nice if you're doing nature shots or something like that but uh for worship especially in, in the pandemic we've gotten used to this lower level quality of video so why break the bank on a six thousand dollar camera when you can do the same thing for four hundred dollars or less so there's good tools out there good 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 stuff but you know one thing i will say that i'm hearing as a common thread is that going into the future we need to consider uh, technologies and um, innovation in our budgets, you know, so it, it, without really knowing exactly how much that is, you learn from that year after year and depending on what the needs are and what the vision is for that year. But right now is budget season. We're all developing our budgets, trying to think about to, um, 2022, block out some space for you to engage some new technologies. Now, where we're saying that there is this permission to be less professional, we still probably don't want to be um, on the like, what is the the, the earliest phone <laughs> that barely had a like from a your Nokia. yeah 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 like, camera on Nokia. right <laughs> didn't even have a camera on it so you don't want to go too far back like upgraded I was in a church a few weeks ago um, I hope they're not on here because they'll know what I'm talking about but <laughs> and um, I went up in the balcony and they still had like an old soundboard and like their uh, CD producing duplicate thing and all this stuff. And I'm looking at all this, like, we're, you're never going to use this again. Like, let's do something with this. So you also don't want to be a digital hoarder where you're just like stacking up, stacking up all this stuff that doesn't get used, especially with technologies, they become very outdated, antiquated, irrelevant very quickly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, want to do that. Yes, sir. Nadine asked a question about uh, 1080p and 4K. Can I respond to that? Please, yeah. So uh, we started off with HD. Well, we started off lower than that. But in recent years, we went from 720p or HD to Ultra HD, which is 1080p, to 4K, which is twice as big and twice as twice the resolution. So you went from something small 
to twice the size to now 4K, which is even twice the size of that. Um, and what the impact is, is in, in file size and bandwidth. So if you're trying to send a 720p signal over your church's uh, DSL line, you're not going to make it. Um, so, you know, get your signal down to a ratio that works for your internet provider. Um, you know, if, you, if you're getting uh, 300 megabits per second down, but only 10 megabits per second up, there's no way you can push a 1080p signal and 4K is totally out of reach. Um, so uh, basically what I'm saying is aim for something in the middle. 720p kind of looks grainy these days. 1080p looks really good for most of our purposes. Um, and if you go 4K, you're just paying a lot of money for a lot more resolution and will need a lot more bandwidth and a lot bigger hard drive space and all that kind of other stuff. I hope that helps. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm sure there's a group of us in the room who have no idea what the two of you just were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but if so, then there that that lends back to one of the hacks, like do what you know, you know. And while we're talking about collecting budgets, like there are people out here who know how to do this. Let them do that. There may be those who've just been sitting in the audience uh, for a long time with nothing to do. And now this is exactly what they're capable of doing at all ages talking about like now teenagers and you know like my my daughter when i got on tiktok she was my tutor she was my mentor in how to you know at, at 10 years old she was my mentor on how to do tiktok and everything and so um now i'm an addict i need help <laughs> but um yeah you definitely want to think about it on that level we got also a question about youtube do you guys know, do you all know a good editing software relating to youtube or video editing i'll just say real quick as lauren's preparing that youtube actually is its own video editor in a lot of ways it does a really good job of providing some of the the management of its editing yeah, ahead, youtube Rick. studio you just click on that yeah, yeah exactly go ahead lauren yeah, Filmora is another great option that's fairly affordable. Um, Say that again. What's the name of it? Filmora. Someone dropped it in the chat, I think. So okay. look back in the chat if you haven't seen it. Uh, I think Brian asked a question about how does this lead to discipleship. And that's where I want to just reaffirm how you have to be intentional about calling people and having being intentional with what the plan is to engage them further. So again, it, it, so imagine you might have a, a Zoom Bible study or a Zoom uh, masterclass, those are all the rage right now. You could have a Zoom masterclass for your church on social justice or LGBT inclusion. So you might invite someone, hey, join our masterclass on LGBT inclusion. The next step for them to, might be to uh, be a leader and invite others to LGBT this class. Uh, and if you keep thinking down the road, it could be like you can discipleship to the point where they're leading their own masterclass. It doesn't have to be on LGBT inclusion. It could be on something else. So again, think intentionally about how you're going to uh, help disciple and grow these people using these digital platforms. Yeah, I definitely want to like hop in on that too, you know, because um, um, in, in the United Church of Christ, you know, uh, for a while we like this campaign slogan, you know, God is still speaking. And um, that actually is what drew me to the church, you know, this denomination in particular, but this idea that if we truly believe that God is still speaking to us in this time and place, is not God still speaking to us in ones and zeros, right? In the digital spaces, you know, using YouTube and Facebook and whatnot, right? And so even just like, um, you know, my point about making sure that we have our theology, right? At the core of what we're doing in our digital spaces, absolutely. If you're just doing technology, say you're doing technology, don't, right? You know, like make sure that why you're doing the technology is rooted in your faith, you know, so that you can share your faith with others, you know? Um, um, and even, you know, to put a perfect example on both Lauren's examples of their do's and don'ts, um, Lauren, you know, talked about, you know, making sure you're not doing stuff all, all by yourself. If we look at the one that we're following Christ, right, even as he was making miracles, he would invite people into that healing. When he broke the bread and made it, made it, made it enough for the 5,000, right? He came through, he took a little kid's lunch, he had the disciples sit the people down, and then they went and distributed the food, right? So even Jesus didn't do all the stuff by himself, right? right. Um, and, and this idea of like, uh, uh, make sure that we're keeping the learning in front of us, you know, um, um, or, or the, the idea of like, well, we've never done it like this before. 
everything Jesus did was nothing like they did before. You know what I'm saying? So like even the practice and the process of getting into these new technologies is a hundred percent what Jesus was doing. He just didn't have, you know, he didn't have a, a, a iPhone in his pocket or they didn't have TikTok, you know, but um, even, you know, repeating the message when Jesus was calling the disciples, you know, this is a Lauren Richmond's comment, you know, around, uh, you know, using the same message, but in different places, we have four gospels talking about the same events. Like the, our very sacred text, right? Has four different tellings of the same story. Like different gospels have different events. And it's the same content. Some of it is ordered in a different way. Some of it has the same story, some don't, right? So we literally have this biblical text. We literally have this person, the person that has us gathering day in and day out, right? Where we can get insights about how it is that we're doing this, right? So again, it's not like a, a how to do technology, but really how are we being Christians in an age that has these technologies? Yeah, you know, I think there was an assumption made uh, that I probably should have been more clear. This webinar was not intending to teach you to how to do discipleship or how to do disciple making. It almost makes an assumption that you as a body of believers have already decided this is what we are commissioned to do, but let's figure out how to do that in a new communication channel. So digital, electronics, technologies, they all are just communication channels for me. So when we go back to the miracles that took place on the day of Pentecost, one of the most essential miracles that I often speak about is the miracle of communication. Mm -hmm. It's because of that moment that the gospel was able to be communicated in many, many different languages. This is the same thing. Facebook is a communication tool. Your, um, your phone is a communication tool. All of those is about communication. So when we went into the pandemic, it was like, okay, we can't communicate the gospel by showing up in this place anymore. That's no longer the tool. Now, what other tools can we use? So we'll do like a phone call or a prayer retreat or like all these other levels of engagement that we need to be able to do. So think about what you're doing currently right now within your collective or within your personhood and decide, I'm going to start also thinking about how I would do that in a digital space. Any other comments about this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean into that with a little uh, Hebrew Bible here. Uh, right, one of my it. favorite communication stories involved Samuel, Eli, and the Lord. As Samuel repeatedly hears Eli's call, Eli finally realized what was happening. And then, then Eli instructed Samuel on the words to use. So yes. see, it took a community to bring things together so that they knew how to communicate. And that's why we have to have the younger generation. We have to have the older generation. We have to have everyone in our community contributing in meaningful ways. And inviting them on a personal level is one way to get them in, like uh, Lauren Richmond was saying. Uh, have the conversation to get the, the personal invitation to get involved. Yeah, thank you so much for that. There, there was a question earlier, you know, talking about hybrid. We do have an episode that we did a couple of months ago that specifically speaks of hybrid. Go to newchurchx.com to uh, look at that playback. But the question was asking what strategies are being used to help people grow in their faith? And again, when we think about, you know, what we just spoke of, um, what I want you to, what, the way I'll respond to that and give them a chance to do so as well, is that it all boils down to relationship. Like, it has to begin with relationship. I think that sometimes is why we've gotten away from using the idea of evangelism because the practices that we learn do not begin with relationship. They begin with like this, hey, do you know Jesus? If not, you're gonna to go to hell. There's a lot of that that happened. And so it gave the evangelism a bad name. When we look at how Jesus did relationship, how God did, uh, how Jesus did evangelism or how God did e e proclamation, which is what evangelism is, then it begins with relationship. God is so relational that God created a relationship within God's self from the very beginning with the Holy Spirit and Jesus all being one. You know, God didn't do it by himself. So we have to think about relationship as we're doing this. And what I'm saying is there's a whole world of people out there who you do not know that you have access to in a very quick, easy way, and you still can authentically get to know them by using your device. That may mean you have to become friends on Facebook with, Facebook with some people who are not your real friends offline, um, who do not quite 
think like you and speak like you and actually begin to get, engage in conversations that might lead to some understandings about their faith and about who Jesus Christ is and then an alternative lifestyle in Christ as we all enjoy. Any other comments? Actually, my comment uh, touches on a question that just came in, right, about, you know, um, how it is we can help some of the elder church members who are not technologically savvy to not get left behind. Um, my suggestion was going to say that, you know, as you're learning new technologies, don't necessarily abandon old ones, right? So if you have a ministry that, you know, produces CDs for a nursing home, for example, um, because those people still have CD players, keep sending the CDs, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so, you know, it's not to say that you're adopting new technologies at the cost of some others, right? You know, um, it, you're expanding the different ways in which you can communicate, right? You know, uh, but now if you're producing CDs and no one in your community has a CD player, well, then maybe it's time to not use that technology, right? So um, this kind of comes back around to, you know, like uh, not just auditing your, your digital spaces, but, you know, what it is that you're doing, you know, to whom are you uh, connecting with or, you know, uh, or, interacting with what are the relationships you're what are the relationships you're building and to make sure you know you're in those spaces of, of relationshiping if i'm trying to do ministry you know with 80 plus year olds i'm probably not going to focus on TikTok, right? right so so know who it is you're trying to speak to and then using those technologies whether that's a printer or a telephone right or your car to get to the person like all of this is technology you know it's just how do you do it in a way that engages the people that you're actually trying to be with um, and then, you know, learning about it and then doing what you do well still. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. It's like people who say, um, I don't, I'm not tech savvy. It's like, did you not drive here? Did you, do, do you, do you buy groceries? Um, do you pay your bills? Like there's no not engaging technology at this point. Um, there are those of us who are far more engulfed in the, in the, um, the actual, uh, culture of it and the practice of it and you know the profession of it you know who do that we're not expecting to invent something but all of us at this point are engaging technology in some means and so we have to consider that okay let's um let's get a couple more questions and then we will uh wrap up for today and and, and go into some other parts of our day let me ask you this all the panelists how can collectives use technology to identify, equip, and develop leaders? I, I, I wrote, wrote out an answer to this one because I thought it was a, a helpful question. I, I'd say individual personal communication is the key to recruiting volunteers and leaders. Uh, flexibility and use of tools will keep people connected. So keep options open for how you're meeting, uh, if you're meeting digitally or in person or a mix of, um, because that flexible meeting structure is helpful for so many reasons. Yeah. Yeah, I wanna piggyback on that. 10 or 15 years ago, uh, I was at a, a member of a disciples church and they would have the worship committee meeting at 10 a.m. on a weekday. Uh, obviously it can be very difficult to engage and recruit younger persons to grow into worship leadership if you're not making space for them. So again, that's where these technologies can be helpful uh, because you can use email, you can use a Zoom, you can use uh, you know recorded things to keep people in the loop. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity of utilizing technology to make space for new people, which is, can be part of their discipling of allowing them opportunities to grow into more uh, opportunities to lead in the church. So Lauren, when um, you're a pastor, um, let's talk about some of the practical ways in which you actually identified room for growth um, or attracted. I know you are very you are a very missional um, type of, of minister, but we we should all of our ministries should not only have a missional but an attractional side. I think that there was this kind of feeling like you need to stop doing the attractional stuff to be the missional. Like all of it has its place. What were some um, some ways in which you actually were more attractional and you use digital elements and technologies to attract people to the collective? Yeah, I think a lot of that can just be uh, putting stuff out there on these different social media platforms, uh, helping people find you. I mean, uh, uh, I'll just be frank if I can. I think every church, uh, if you're watching, every church 
kind of to what Piwa said, like we should look at all our websites and consider like, uh, is this a good website that's going to be an attractional to, is someone going to join this and be curious about how can I, it, are there easy, is it clear? Is there easy ways that where it's clear about how can I get engaged, take next steps? Uh, if it's a website, that looks like it's built in the 1990s. Uh, someone my age or younger is probably not going to be too interested in engaging more in your church. Yeah. Did you guys want to say anything more? No, I think all that is, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, too, you know, I, there's so many tools, so many options, some of them free, some of them not. Um, and you can literally end up spending your entire week just trying to find out options, you know. <laughs> so truly, just start where you are. If you're someone who's only on Facebook, focus on that, right? You know, again, like being clear about who you are, what it is, what is your mission, what is your purpose, what is your message, um, and then just doing that well. Um, and helping people help you let others know what's going on. You know, there's so many times where, um, um, you know, church signs, like physical church signs, which is also a technology, right? Um, how often those signs have gone viral when people share messages that feel radical when we've got this Christianity that's oppressive, right? That's literally killing people in our day and now. And to see a Christian church offer a message of hope or possibility or inclusivity, that becomes viral, right? So literally, it does not have to be anything fancy. Just do what it is that you do, be who you are. And then really what we're talking about is helping other people understand or know that you are there because there are people in your communities who need what you have. They just don't know about it, right? So this really truly is about communicating to others the goodness that y'all have tapped into that they now can also be a part of, you know, so they can get that healing, they can get their hope and possibility and justice making and, you know, just whatever it is that is at your core as a group, as a community, you're just helping people find out that you're there because our world is hurting and we're much in need. Yeah, the whole purpose is to introduce God, you know, so we, we need to be able to do that in some new ways, considering the audience's communication channel. You know, so we may have our ways that we communicate, um, but when we think about who our target, um, who our ideal participant is, there's like, how do they communicate? What is the best thing to do um, to help uh, single fathers uh, get the gospel at a, when, when they need to go out and be with their child who's playing basketball on a Sunday morning and not able to come to, so just like, we're mad at them because they chose their child's sports rather than come into our Sunday morning service. No, like maybe we need to figure out if that's who we want to appeal to and make sure that the gospel is given to finding some way to do so. And so that person may do what better with a podcast. You could easily take your content, the Sunday, the, um, the, the teachings that you taught on Wednesday night, turn into a podcast, splice that hour up into four different sections, and you have a whole month's worth of uh, content for a podcast series so that when their son is not doing so well, they can just put the earbuds in and listen to your podcast during the son's <laughs> basketball game or the daughter's basketball game. But there's all sorts of ways. As we come to a close, Lauren, I want to um, make sure that you saw this question on here about um, uh, different type of uh, group texting things and things like that that can be used as sometimes are used by school new church ministry what we use for our water to plants prayer call um communications is an app called clearstream and i chose them because they're also a christian company so i'm happy to um give you guys that information but lauren you're in higher education uh lauren baxter what is going on with in the higher education is some of the tools you're using that could easily be translated into congregations um for congregational outreach um I've just started exploring the, the text question of how to text groups of people. Slack is a good option. Um, it's one that we've used uh, professionally um, in various groups. Um, Remind is another popular one that's uh, quite often used in uh, school environments. Um, and really those are the two at the forefront of, of my toolkit. All right, great. I used something called Pastor's Line. It was very affordable and it actually provided an opportunity where people could text in and you could uh, use it as a digital connect card. 
uh, or visitor card, depending on your, your nomenclature. So there's many different options you can use to engage with people both ways. Yeah, there's, um, I, I love that we're asking these questions though, because sometimes you are um, timid about engaging certain technologies and we don't wanna spend money and we don't know if it works. So if you are, um, you know, really reach out to your fellow community leaders and see what they're using and how it's working for them, especially if you share a neighborhood with another community. All right, there was a question earlier about, um, does anyone have any recommendations on lights and lighting for band members? Let's, if you have anybody who uh, really understands the whole thing with lighting, please throw that into the chat because we really would like to learn more about it. I'll just show you guys that <laughs> right now we, we are not necessarily spend a lot of money on lighting, but because I travel and I'm able have to do all these things, I need to be able to do something that is very um, easy. So I, you know, I have the ring light here. It's kind of you know it's set up there for me to be able to do what I need to do, and I can carry it across the country. You know, so it is sufficient. Like now, you walk into anyone's living room, they have a a, a ring light next to a like that's like become the norm. So there are plenty of ways to do what it is that you need to do. Lauren, show us your um, your illum your box. See, it's very light, very, and it's lighting you just fine. So there are plenty of ways to uh, to do this and it doesn't have to be that much. If you remember tips from our hybrid uh, episode, it talked about showing face and not space. So sometimes if you think you have to light your whole sanctuary, that may be the wrong approach. You may need to do something that gets really up close and per personal with the persons who are speaking and that's going to uh, save you time. Again, there are experts out there, engage them. You can uh, connect with us at Disciples Church Extension Fund to learn more about ways that we can help you transform your buildings and things like that into something that is very usable and friendly as you walk into this next century. All right, we are almost at the end of this webinar today. We wanna to thank each of you for joining us. Please consider the many ways in which you and your congregation might get involved with new church movement either in your region or um, if you're not a member of the Christian Church of Science of Christ, we love to be siblings. We love to be a partner with you in um, maybe one of your communities there. And if you are or know of a potential church planter, please send them my way. I'd love to welcome them into the Christian Church Disciples of Christ family. For more information about this episode, episode and also to share the playbacks uh, from previous episodes, you can go to newchurchhacks.com. We will get that loaded to you right away. To connect with New Church Ministry or to better yet register for Leadership Academy that's coming up in 20 days, please visit newchurchministry.org or newchurchtraining.org. And we'd love to have your Leadership Academy this year. All right, Piwa, Lauren, Lauren, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, so um, email is probably the best for me. Um, I, uh, I gave Leslie, uh, Wesley my uh, contact info. I'm not sure if it got emailed to you in time, but um, it's uh, my, my surname, L-A-N-G-E-N-I, and the letter P, at UCC.org. Um, yeah, just send me an email, check that out, um, and I will, I'm happy to be in conversation with you. I'm actually getting ready to pilot a brand new program that some of your questions uh, will be very much in tune with um, what I'm calling, you know, the, the Exodus experience, the Exodus experiment, which uh, launches September 27th. Um, so if you're interested in that, you know, um, again, like I can drop the link in the chat real quick. Um, but if you email me and ask about Exodus, I got you. Yeah, we, we're doing that like collaboratively. So we're trying to set it up so people right after you leave Leadership Academy, you can go into experiencing the Exodus experience experiment. Experiment. experiment yeah. So uh, please get into it. All right. Baxter, what do you have for us? How can we get a hold of you? I posted my chat or uh, my contact stuff in the chat. Um, and I just want to give everybody a word to be agile and be flexible, but also be kind to yourself. There's so much out there to learn and wrap your minds around as you're trying to connect with other people. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you. Uh, you can connect with me at Lauren at ResonateMediaPro.com. I'll drop my information into the chat here. And I'd love for you to check out my podcast, Future Christian Podcast. I have a great interview out with uh, today with Melissa Floor Baxler and uh, have an episode if you look back with Terrell and uh, Piwa, I'll have to be in touch with you about getting on the pod if you're Let's do interested. It. <laughs> okay. what, is Reson, um, what is the name of your media company? What is that there? 
Resonate Media Production. So if you're a church looking for a podcast, uh, I'm with Terrell. Every church should have a podcast. You have content. Sunday morning, you can easily put into a podcast. Be, be glad and love to help you uh, learn how to do that. So hit me up at lauren at resonatemediapro.com. All right. Thank you all again so much for all that you've unpacked for us. Uh, like I said, church, we will make sure that we have all of these hacks available for you at newchurchhacks.com. Please, please, please remember that you can get a hold of me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on them all. And so you can also email me at Terrell, T-E-R-E-L-L, at newchurchministry.org. The best way to communicate with me by far is through text message. So you can text me at 317-593-5323. Now, here are seven totally off topic new church hacks for boosting your Instagram marketing strategy for your collective. Here we go. Number one, before rushing to start into marketing, take a moment to establish your goals. Number two, decide what you want to accomplish with your strategy. Three, set a key performance indicator for each one of your tactics to help you measure your progress. Four, evaluate along the way. If you're not meeting your goals, adjust, do something new. Five, gather research so that you're able to make informed decisions and appeal to the right audience. Number six, determine who your target participant is. Think about their age, their location, their behaviors, their interests. It's much more than just their demographics. It is some of the things they enjoy doing. And number seven, research the digital presence of similar collectives to identify opportunities and challenges and learn from those who appear to be doing it well. But let me tell you, we all are just trying to figure this thing out. So <laughs> um, really try to, you, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and you just have to ask and most people are willing to show you. I have a bonus hack for you. Your bonus hack is follow New Church Ministry on Instagram. Go ahead and jump over there right now and uh, look us up. It's at New Church Ministry so that we are able to stay in contact with you and throw out all the amazing things that we have coming up. And we would love to follow you back. Thank you for being with us today. Please join us for Leadership Academy. We have a brand new track that focuses on ministry innovation and disciple making. We'd love to have you in your congregation. Uh, we made a decision this morning that we're not going to raise the registration um, like we thought we were. We're going to keep the registration low because we want everybody to have uh, access to this, which we have brought out. We're uh, at Leadership Academy. We will explore an ethos of experimentation, engage a transformative experience with our spiritual scientists, and adopt a radical culture of disciple making. As a reminder, the spirit has challenged each and every one of us uh, within the Christian Church of Disciples of Christ to make 1 million new disciples by 2030. So we need to get everyone of all ages, all abilities, all achievements to accomplish this feat. And I believe in a God that specializes in the impossible. I'm ready. Are you ready? I think you're ready. Let's do this. Again, let's um, chat offline. We're going to hang out here in a few moments to just kind of uh, see what more conversation there is. You are welcome to go or you are welcome to stay. We uh, would love to engage a couple more questions if you have them there. Bless you so much, siblings. We will see you next time. We'll be having a conversation on decolonizing the church. Please be there. God bless you. All right, this was a great conversation. Yeah, like I think, yeah, I think that it was good that some of the people came in and were like, uh, what does this have to do with discipleship? And I, I do try to make, I, I think I make a, maybe it's a poor assumption to make, but I make the assumption that you're a Christian, you're already thinking about disciple making. Is that wrong of me? It's not wrong, but maybe not all the way right. <laughs> <laughs> Expound. <laughs> No, truly, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, with so many flavors of Christianity, you know, even within a particular one denomination, right, there's so many beliefs and ways, right, of living out, you know, gotcha. the gospel, whatever that may mean to different people, you know, in, in a different context, right, it lands differently as well. Um, but yeah, I think it is really important, though, again, with so much noise, so much pressure, right, to have like the shiniest, the best, the brightest, um, you know, the most produced, whatever, right, like, just to be reminded, just to get back to basics, why are we here, why are we doing this, you know. I think that's a, I think it's a great reminder to, to have that. Um, even for those who are doing the work, sometimes we can get discouraged when we run into so many frustrations or challenges. And, you know, all of us in this last year and a half, right, on a steep learning curve, because 
we haven't been in right. a pandemic like this before, yeah. right? So um, I think it's a great reminder. Yeah. We, AIC, Jose joined the room. Wesley joined the room. Thank you guys so much for being here. Did you have any comments that you wanted to make? And also, Benita has her hand up, so we'll acknowledge her in a few moments. But wanted to give you guys to introduce yourselves and um, say any comments that you have uh, relating to this conversation today. Pastor Jose. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Jose Martinez. I am the Associate Minister of New Church Ministry uh, with Terrell, and um, I'm, I'm here in Kansas City, Missouri. I have a church plant called Missio KC, and then also a nonprofit called Story Wagon. Did you have any comments about our conversation? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really interesting, really good, um, all good points. One of the things that uh, I want to kind of add to it was that uh, the digital content uh, with the discipleship it needs to be not only planned out, but flexible enough in that plan if something else comes into play. Uh, so, for instance, we were talking about the pandemic, but we have all these other issues that are going on. The earthquake in Haiti, the hurricanes that are occurring right now, the Afghanistan-ish situation with the refugees. And then that way, if it's flexible enough, you can speak into it. Even though you had something else planned, you can kind of shift it and make it flexible for that uh, to, to comment on the current situations of the day yeah got that go ahead wesley and then also maybe tell some there was a question about leadership academy being virtual if you can answer that too sure sure hello everybody i'm wesley king i'm the program coordinator for new church ministry for the disciples of christ um i thought today was a great conversation one of the things i was just going to add was that um a lot of times all of these things can feel like we're drinking from a water hose, right? Like there's so many options, so many things that are uh, being offered to us. Um, so I forget who it was, but some people said basically boils down to find what you can do and do it well. Um, you don't have to do all things for all people. You don't have to be all things for all people. But whatever you do decide to do, wherever you do feel God calling you or leading you into ministry, whatever that is or wherever that is, do it well. And I think that's the main thing, you know, something from the last um, New Church Hacks episode that we had was that if, if doing all of these new things makes you a bad church in person, then don't do them. You know, right. that's well, maybe this, yeah. maybe this is not for you. You want, you don't want to sacrifice your ministry uh, to your people, especially those folks in person who may not have the opportunity or the wherewithal to to be virtual um you don't want to sacrifice that just because there's a new shiny toy that's available at the at the best buy you know so um i think a lot of discernment goes into this disciple making too as to as to what you're going to do and how you're going to do it well and what people are you going to reach with it yeah good stuff um, and leadership academy yeah so leadership academy is virtual this year uh, I'm not sure if that was the exact question, but it will be virtual this year, September 21st through 23rd, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, registration is open. And like Terrell said, we are not going back to, you know, we had raised the price until the deadline. And then we've decided this morning that we're going to leave that lower price for multiply. Um, so even if you're not a church planter, if you are an existing pastor of an existing congregation, we have a track for you that's all about innovation and disciple making and it's called multiply so check it out there's, there's a link in the chat i'll put it in there again just in case you don't want to scroll and scroll and scroll to find it um what is leadership academy somebody said leadership academy is a training program that lasts for three days um it is it's historically has been for those folks who are planting churches uh, have either started or have not, but it's also this year for, for pastors who have existing congregations and want to innovate. They want to grow and make disciples. They want to multiply their ministries. So um, check it out at uh, um, the link that I will drop in the chat in just a second, Russ. Yeah, thank you. Listen, um, PY has to, has to jump off, but I wanted to thank you again. Thank you again, Lauren. Um, and Lauren had to jump off and go be chaplain, uh, but it was real. This was uh, super fun. And I'm grateful, right, that there's an audience for these questions, because I do truly believe that this is the next question for the church, how we're going to be church when the world has shifted faster than any other era in our history, right? So right. how do we, again, remain rooted in the message? And so this actually is like got me excited to, you know, about church again. 
um, you know, just, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, I think that's the point. Um, Jose, maybe give us a little more with uh, the question that we had earlier about the connection between these tools and how we specifically use them to do uh, disciple making. Maybe some of your particular heart on the necessity for discipleship. Right, one of the key things is that um, we want to look at uh, uh, faithful innovation, okay, discipleship through faithful innovation. So um, making sure that like as, as, as you're uh, trying to innovate and try to connect to your local neighborhood and innovating ways of to making those connections, no matter what platform you're utilizing, it, it, you know, PY was saying, you know, making sure it's connecting back to your, uh, your vision, mission, and values. Uh, that that is the key thing to this whole thing, and we've always said, you know, through this whole thing, you don't have to be on the newest thing. It, it, again, it's what is your neighborhood saying to you, what they need, um, or how are they trying to express themselves, and that sort of thing. Because we have many different issues that are going on right now, and again, we don't have to do it alone. Um, it could be uh, we're, we're we're one body, you know, we're we're, we're different little communities, uh, churches, but we're just one body all together. So we're not in comp competition with one another. So it's okay to partner with other collectives, other congregations to uh, connect in different ways. So if, if you're wondering about how to do TikTok, and you don't have to do, you know, you don't have the people that do, are doing TikTok, you can partner with another ministry and say, hey, um, how, you know, is there a way that we can partner in a, in a way that we can connect to the community utilizing your expertise in, in TikTok? And maybe you're that community that's able to, uh, that, that connects with the older folks that you, maybe you go into different institutions such as hosp uh, hospice houses or uh, retirement homes or things of that nature. And you're connecting to people on that level and they'll need some sort of partnership with that if that's the people who they want to also connect with you know so partnering with one another and, and just getting this competition thing out of uh, out of our minds you know i think that's another thing that has been a result of um the dominant culture uh you know colonizing you know that yeah. sort of thing uh p was like speaking to to my heart when he was talking about that that we have to kind of deconstruct the methodology a little bit and reconstruct a new way of being church together. And so I think that's a way that we can really connect um, making that 1 million disciples, <laughs> you know, that we're, that we have so much, uh, you know, in our minds and hearts, uh, because it is all about the great commission. You know, that, that is one of the key things. Wesley, you got any thoughts on it as, as we're hearing that? Well, well I, one of the things you said, faithful innovation, I think, Truly, it's how we speak about it, right? Um, Lauren, you were engaging with someone in the chat um, who was saying that, you know, um, they had lots of older members, elderly members who had adapted to a lot of the, the technology that they, that they had, um, had utilized because of this pandemic. And I think a lot of it is how we frame it. You know, I think a lot of times we make an assumption that um, a certain group can't do a certain thing. And if we frame it in a way like, like this faithful innovation, I love that term, Jose. Uh, if we frame it in a way like, hey, this is something that we are doing together. We can absolutely do this. However we speak about it is going to inform how people receive it, right? Um, Lauren, what, you, what, you were inter, inter, uh, interacting with someone in the chat about that. Do you want to speak any more to that before we, before we go today? No, I mean, really uh, touching on integrating others from different age groups uh, and personally inviting somebody. So we just invited a, a retiree to come and get involved in our stream team. And they're like, oh. Yeah, okay, I can learn how to run a soundboard. Great. And then I, I've got a 15-year-old who works in the local school's theater. I said, hey, would you like to hear about we're doing, what we're doing for streaming? Because uh, I think that learning how to use microphones kind of would tie into what you're doing with your theatrical work. Right. So I'm, I don't know if that touches on it, but that absolutely ways to get different yeah. audiences together from different perspectives. 
and it, it creates it automatically creates intergenerational ministry. I, yeah. You know, Terrell's talking about his daughter helping him navigate TikTok, which is the new the newest thing. You know, um, so any ways any ways that we can uh, do ministry together, especially intergenerationally, that would be that would be wonderful. Um, well, we are we are coming up on um, three a little fifteen after the hour. Any final thoughts from Lauren or from Jose? Um, about today before we before we adjourn this has been rich uh i i am so grateful to have been invited uh so thank you all for the support lended during the the webinar and uh, for the invitation of course thank you lauren for joining us jose any final thoughts yeah one last thing um to everybody who's watching out there i whatever you're doing uh, you're doing a great job. <laughs> you know, mm. we all can always improve. Keep on doing what you're doing. Never stop trying. Keep moving forward. Don't let anything, you know, there, there's going to be bumps in the road. Uh, that, that's just a part of life. But just mm. keep on doing because God sees it. And we all see it. And, and, and we love you for it. Absolutely. I think a lot of folks need that affirmation. So I appreciate that. Pastor Terrell, any final thoughts before we adjourn today? Yeah, thank you so much. You know, the main thing is that we recognize that the Great Commission was not just for the pastor. Each and every one of us are commissioned and equipped and empowered mm -hmm. through the Spirit to be able to do what God has uh, asked for us to do in this Great Commission. And before there was a Great Commission, there was a First Commission. God's first thing God said to humankind was be fruitful and multiply. We need to be able to do that. I saw um, earlier that my friend Bob was like, I may never catch up with technology. But one thing about Bob Kendall's life is that when it was a life of fruitfulness, it was a life of multiplying because Bob spoke into the hearts and the lives of so many people along their church planting journey and their entire Christian journey. You were fruitful, my friend, and it may not be through <laughs> technology, uh, but you had your technology of your time and you're still here with us today. I bet you Bob was that one person said, this is my first time. <laughs> um, and I, I know him, so I can kill with him like that. But um, the point is that that you you need to be able to do that and do it in a way that's authentic for you. You know, so we wanted to offer a platform for those who are interested in understanding how to engage digital processes more, but you got to do what works for you. And sometimes it's not for you to focus on your weaknesses, it's to really enhance your strengths. But above all, we have a million disciples to make. We have a billion disciples to make. We need to transform the whole world in the name of Christ. So let's get at it. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for hanging out with us a little more after this. We uh, are going to have our next show on decolonizing the church. It is going to be a dynamic conversation. You do not want to miss it. Um, so please be with us in October when we will have an opportunity to engage in that conversation. We know that over the past couple of years, even, we've had a lot of, uh, uh, of progress made as a society. But oh my God, do we have a lot more to make. So please help us to um, be a part of that conversation and understand the things that we need to do to get rid of some of our biases, our prejudice, and begin to love like Jesus. I love you. I hope you love me. Thank you for being here, and we will see you next time.